Okay, hello again. Now everybody is here, so we can start, and I just hand off to my colleague from the ETH, Zurich. Yes, hello, everybody. My name is Pascal Schmidt. I'm here with my colleague Jonas Lanz from ETH Zurich. We work in the Educational Development and Technology Department, and we have actually a cooperation between uh, University of Münster and ETH and other um, players in Germany mainly. And we would like to show you a bit what we did uh, as a, a Moodle plugin, which makes a direct connection to an open cost instance. So the, we have really common goals, and I think other institutions have it as well, which means that we want to just free up Moodle from storing all these large video files, which, I mean, you know what I mean, and, and this is just outsourced on a video hosting, so uh, up to now some um, um, teaching personnel have used Moodle, but of course this can, can create quite some performance issues. So we have now, we use SwitchCast, which is uh, the, the, the Swiss organization which hosts this large uh, OpenCast instance. We have also an internal OpenCast um, instance, but this is used for uh, lecture recordings. So our common goal is really to use this video hosting system. We want that the instructors actually are really independent in uploading video files that it doesn't go in the workflow through us so we can free up time also in the past we had to deal with it we had then to upload it on our own open cast and create an, um, snippets codes which we had to send them back they Im embedded it in their courses with the new solutions they're completely independent and can upload and manage the files themselves upload them embedded in the course they can adjust the rights, really, which roles in Moodle can do what in terms of uploading and embedding. And they can even delete inside Moodle as like a remote control the videos, uh, which then, so they don't really have to access OpenCast actually. Um, we can also then for students do the same. Um, they can, in certain cases, upload and embed um, videos. For example, if it was a task during the semester to do uh, some kind of group work, we'll talk to that afterwards also. Um, then in the case of the University of Münster, they can optionally use another player than the OpenCast player, Theodul, Paelia, and uh, annotation tool, which is the same, I think, as Switch annotation uses. Um, in our case, we use JW video player as a, a general video player. And our common long-term goal is really that we have in the end one plugin version for the whole uh, Moodle community. So we want to bring together all the, the needs and ideas um, and then really go then internationally and uh, we are on a good way already. Yes? It was initially developed, I think, a year, one and a half, half a year ago with the Technical University of Ilmenau. Then we took that code and uh, f developed it further with an external uh, IT company, Synergy Learning. Then we realized that Uni Münster is also having very similar needs. So we s then we decided we, we get together and, and go in the, in the direction of a, of a common um, version. <coughs> so we are main, so mainly now it's developed by, by University of Münster. Uh, my colleagues can tell more about it. Uh, Synergy Learning is there as an external um, software de developer company who can jump in if resources fall short. Um, there's a community cooperation. You can uh, um, participate in this um, mailing list and they have a monthly web meeting where my colleague Jonas is taking part and anybody who's interested can join there. Yes? Now I switch over because it, it gets technical and I'm not from my background <laughs> and a developer, which you will see in a minute. So how is it actually designed? So I have to say I'm not uh, part of the development of this uh, 
ja, Moodle-Plugin. I'm basically doing open path development. Um, so I'm here all for my colleague Tobias, um, who actually implemented, or who actually implemented um, many of, of the uh, plugins. So it is split into four plugins uh, that you can um, basically pick, pick and choose. So we have a common um, plugin called Tool Opencast that is mainly for pro um, providing API functionality. So that is where you um, connect up to Opencast and uh, many of the API interactions are implemented in that plugin. So from a user point, um, there is not much a user sees, but um, this plugin is vital for um, the other ones. Um, so we have a block, a block in Opencast is, as I understand it, um, a piece of content that you can um, put within your course and you can implement um, yeah, many um, things in there. What we use it for is for managing, uploading and deleting video files. So you um, see all your um, files which are part of a series um, that is connected to the Moodle, Moodle course and then you can interact with those um, videos and events. Uh, then we have the repository. Um, that is something which you use to embed um, videos within content. So you have like a text editor and then you can say, okay, in this place I want to uh, put a video from Opencast. You click um, the repository, um, select Opencast and then you can choose um, the videos which are part of this series. And lastly, we have a filter. When you embed something within a course, um, it actually just writes the Opencast URL um, to that media package or to that event. Um, and then the filter is actually responsible for replacing that URL with an, with an, actual, yeah, with an actual, actual player. So in our case, it is an Opencast player, but it could also be a JW player. Um, and I think that is implemented in Moodle um, directly. But filter Opencast just uses the Opencast player. Um, so this is just a diagram how this all uh, connects up. So tool uh, Opencast is... Um, yeah, necessary for all plugins, um, and then you can basically choose what you want. So you can use a block to enable uh, your um, students or your uh, instructors to imp to to upload um, videos and manage their um, their videos. Um, but you can also say, okay, I want only to use the repository to embed videos, and the video management is done by somebody else, like Opencast administrators or um, yeah, whoever. So right now we want to show you how we are actually using it and we will start with ETH Zurich. Who wants to? Yes, uh, by the way, we, at the end we have uh, um, about 10 to 15 minutes slot for all your questions. Um, but if you feel like you wanna jump in uh, right in a, in, in a question based on a screenshot you're seeing, just don't hesitate and uh, let me know and ask your question. So it's, uh, as my colleague already said, uh, it's fairly simple. So you, inside a Moodle course, you add um, a block and which is uh, dedicated to use Opencast in the background. So you have actually to go uh, in, in the course management as in the editing mode and add this block at the, at the bottom. And then if you go to blocks, you would have quite a lot of different blo uh, blocks and then you just select the open cost videos one. Um, so they don't have to log in uh, to open cost, which is an advantage. Um, Moodle really works entirely as a kind of remote control for the whole video handling. Yes? Once you have added this block on the page, um, you can start to add videos. Here you see a screenshot where no video is available yet there. So you just start, you press um, add video, video hinzufügen. Once some videos are there, you would have a short list. Then you have just the, the, the normal upload mechanism. You have an indication what um, video files you are able to upload. 
The setup is currently uh, up to one gigabyte is possible to upload. Um, on request, uh, we, uh, people can upload up to three gigabyte. If, but then uh, they have to contact us, mail us, and then we can open that possibility just for this course. So as you know, uh, one gigabyte is, is, is a, a reasonable starting file, but often it's not enough yet. So we can go up to three, which is uh, basically the system barrier. What can you say to that? Uh, um, that means that three is three gigabyte is the actual limit. Let's let's say this is no limit. The final limit will be limited by the system itself, by PHP. Maybe in some years there will be much more possible than now. Yes, we came to the conclusion that we, we shouldn't allow more than three. Uh, yeah. Uh, in the SD stream, but n but the the default is up to one gigabyte. Yes. So then that's how it looks like once people have op uh, are uh, uploading files. Uh, on the on the top left, you see there's just um, one file I, I just uh, uploaded, which is uh, ready to to go there. And below there are two other files which are already op um, uploaded there, which says the status is there. They are ready to Im Im to use to implement, and you can delete them directly here if you like. It's just the English version. So by the way, it's yes the whole uh, the user interface, which is simple, is in, in German and um, English available. So based on the user who has his Moodle setting, German or English. This, the language switches here as well. Then this is like how it looks like if uh, somebody uploads several videos in a row. If you have the, the little clock, then it says it's still running and the others are already um, there. Mm, yes? Ah, you can, that's not something we can do. Uh, the, the, the scheduling, you can say, upload it on, on day X. Yes, that's yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's something where we have not merged yet entirely our, our two versions. Yeah. Okay, then we have just created a simple uh, PDF, uh, you, a little manual, and just that, that you get an idea how we communicate to to teaching personnel, to somebody who is not interested in, uh, in too many technical things. We just tell them they have now the option to easily upload videos, drag and drop them uh, directly in the Moodle course. They get an easy overview of all the courses which they have uh, uploaded in inside one course. That they have the possibility to delete th uh, the videos quickly on their own and that they can control and allow their students to upload videos on themselves so they can go in the configuration of that course and uh, assign this right to the students. At ETH we get more and more the situation that uh, professors and teachers um, ask the students to create little videos as, as a task during the semester to show that they have understood a certain concept to show a field experiment, a lab, and that's a, a very uh, a nice case. We have a very good feedback from students that they like this kind of task um, to, to really understand the things, to, to really uh, have also kind of, of a, a, f um, a check on their own if they have really understood it, because if they can produce a video about it, which is then often reviewed by peers, they get uh, a very clear indications if they really have understood the, the content, which also is then on the exam. And often we have really nice videos which teachers can use in the following semester. So it's, I think it's really a good thing. And so we wanted to have this control so that they don't have just to, to upload it to any YouTube or Vimeo page. And, and then you can get a mess with about access rights and privacy. So here you can use the whole system really for um, uploading thing and in a, in a second talk I will be giving at quarter past four I will talk about interactive video which is a night where 
you have also the feature that um, students can com make comments into videos, which could also be then into those videos of their colleagues. So if you're interested in that, you can also see that. So it's not only uploading the, the, the peer video, but also then discuss about it inside um, a specific and another plugin. Great. Um, yeah, that's just uh, taken from this manual for the users. That's the info they get. They can, uh, one important point at the moment, uh, the uploaded video can only be used for just one um, specific Moodle course, but we are working on that um, this can be used over several courses, specifically if you copy paste the course in, a, in a, the next year um, to have a, an, uh, a new like instance of the video. Maybe Jonas, can you quickly tell a bit more professionally what I mean? <laughs> no, it's, it's a quite, quite exactly as you said. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Some more jargon, please. <laughs> okay. Now you said it right. It is it's an instance. That means that on OpenCast, in fact, the video gets not really copied if it is a large video. But in the end, you have really two different videos in two different courses. And when you touch the one video, you won't touch the other and vice versa as it is now. That's, uh, we are in there in the intermediate state, so, um, but working on, oh, sorry, just one little back, and just that's just all the, you see uh, you have quite a large uh, range of, of um, options of, of video formats you can upload. Right, okay, thanks. Then that's what I said already, they are in, f uh, actually we don't tell them it's one gigabyte and we don't tell them that they can um, well, we tell, we tell them they can contact us, but we, we were discussing a bit, as you can imagine, if we allow everybody with a three gigabyte files from the beginning, it could uh, result that in, in low performance in, in, in a lot of support cases. So we, we just say them uh, the, the maximum file size is limited, so we don't tell them the numbers, that's just for you to know, one gigabyte and then up to three gigabytes, so that will, just we thought it's a bit better to not to be too specific because that, because that can change over time also. Um, then we tell them that the transmission time is just, uh, is, is something they have to be aware of and that we recommend that they don't make any other changes. So while uploading one, two videos, not in parallel, create quizzes and surveys inside the Moodle course, because that could uh, get some um, reactions you don't want to see in terms of performance. And just that they, they will see immediately when the processing is completed, so it really renders the video into various formats based on the device, then you will access it. Yes? That's it? Great. Super. Then we switch to University of Münster. Okay, I'll quickly talk about the two use cases we have for using this plugin at our institution. But first, I forgot that I put the technical status in here, so we're doing that with an OpenCast 5.2 with a bunch of backports that Matthias did, uh, with a Moodle on 3.5, and we've been using all those plugins the whole semester, so since October, and our experience has been really good because it saved us a lot of work. So the two use cases that we have is that lecturers actually manage their own lecture recordings through that, and that other lecturers well upload their own content and manage it there. So for managing the lecture recordings, it means in our case, they request the lecture recordings, we schedule those, and then embed the LTI activity. And from that point on, the instructors can actually see when the recordings are going to happen and the exact times as well. But they can also delete the scheduled recordings because it happens quite often that they write us an email, hey, this lecture is not going to take place because I'm sick or at a conference or whatever, now we would have to manually delete that, now they can actually do that themselves, which saves us a lot of work. And the same goes for that we can manage who has access to the recordings. So once it was processed, they, they can say, okay, this lecture is only available for instructors, or this lecture is only available for students, or even for a similar group. We have 
quite a few lecturers who only want the lectures to be available for themselves at the beginning and then look through it themselves and then have it only available for students afterwards. And now this semester, why we introduced this feature is also that we have some lecturers who say, okay, I'll do lecture recordings, but I only want the recordings available for a small group of students. So I know one lecturer who only makes the recordings available for one young mother within the lecture for series, and that's it. I mean, that's fine by us. That's what we actually made this feature for. It's pretty cool. And lastly, of course, the students can access all the recordings through one activity, which is different from the next use case being that the instructors can actually upload their videos as the colleagues just showed, the process is pretty much the same, so I'm not going to go into that. But basically, they just uploaded open class processes and the instructors can manage first access, the same thing with, as with lecture recordings. But the big difference here is that the instructors can actually choose where to embed it. So in any activity in Moodle, if there's a text editor, they can embed it. And the filter, as Matthias explained in the beginning, well then replace that with the chosen player. And in our case, that is going to be the, for embeds, that's going to be the Paella player. But the instructors can also choose to have the annotation tool because we have quite a few instructors who are in teacher education and they use the Opencast annotation tool quite heavily. If you want to know more about that, I think there's a session on Friday, right? Yeah. Okay, that's about our use cases. Of course, the development on those plugins is not nearly finished, but I give off to Matthias for that. So again, replacing Tobias Reichmann. <laughs> um, of course, some stuff is always missing, and also here that is the case. Um, so we want to, or maybe want to um, add more features for students. Um, our main use cases focus, uh, focused on instructors, and therefore um, we only considered those. Um, and right now it is possible to give users rights to upload their own videos, but then each user is able to delete files from other users and so on. Maybe something that is something that should be fixed. So each user is then uh, in, yeah, uh, responsible for um, his or her own um, videos and then um, can manage them independently. Um, also, uh, right now we are not um, yeah we we show that the current um, the current uh, status of the video but only relating to um, has it been uh, recorded or is it uh, right now being recorded is it um, right now in the workflow um, or is the workflow finished and the video is ready but it doesn't show that the video um, needs to be cutted um, so that can be improved. And also we like to um, um, yeah, give instructors the ability to cut uh, videos themselves. Right now in our institute we uh, do that for them and probably will continue to do that. But many also asked us um, if they can cut um, those videos themselves. Uh, and also it is translated in German and in English, but um, if um, other countries want to use um, that plugin, translation is also needed. So right now we uh, want to open up for questions and maybe we can discuss some things. So from your point of view, what can be improved and um, what features do you need in, in your institutes? And maybe we can have a discussion right now. Any question? For the recording, I mean. So my question is whether all of you use just a single stream or is anyone using a dual stream? We ran into problems with the dual stream, so we, we fixed that, that we do convert the dual stream to one single stream. You mean in terms of you have a presenter and presentation and you play them both simultaneously, so we do that. We have two, I believe, up to three streams right now. Uh, maybe more? Yeah. Three is possibly safe, which happens quite a bit in the office. Okay, yeah. 
So you have to distinguish between the uploads, which are always going to be a single stream because there's nothing else possible, but our Lex recordings can have one, two, or three, and in the future, maybe even more streams. And that's why we made the distinction that at the moment, the embeds for the uploads are always the paella, but for the Lex recordings, we still do the LTI activity that we embed, and then that goes to the TLDO player where Getting more streams is a bit easier than with Theodore and I was still paler in my opinion, but well, it works pretty well for us. If you are using more than single stream, what is the maximum bitrate you are aiming at? I mean, altogether, all the streams you have quite large bandwidth consumption, and assuming that in some cases you don't have enough bandwidth for the end users, I mean. Uh, so we are not hitting the ceiling right now as in terms of bandwidth. And I can't give you a bit rate because we use a constant grade factor, I believe it's called. Um, so a constant quali quality. And I'm not sure what we use. I think it is, in FFmpeg, it is 23, I believe. So quite um, you, you cannot you cannot tell the megabits because it's it what what the encoder tries to do is to um, hold the same quality level and then chooses a variable bit rate um, to hold that quality level i i don't i don't know actually and um, usually if you are concerned with this um, you can uh, encode different qualities during the processing and make sure that uh, in one case you have a quality selector in both players if you yeah, want to. Exactly a right. You would have a manual uh, quality selector in both players and if you want to go with adaptive streaming you can also do it at least uh, there's an implementation for Bowser uh, for adaptive streaming for again both players that we support uh, available to make sure that you have the bandwidth. And Bowser would probably also, from the provider side, be able to manage the bandwidth accordingly. If not enough uh, bandwidth is there to deliver the streams, it will scale it down. But I don't know many universities who reach their um, server limits in delivering streams. And for the students, uh, a manual selector, if they notice that it's not working that well, is working also um, uh, quite good as they simply see, okay, I s turn down the quality. I can tell you something from the head for the university side. I have tons of users sitting in the room and maybe three or four streams a day doing the same thing, doing the head for their class of users because they may have directly their users there together. <laughs> and I realize that is sometimes the university really limit. And that, of course, means that the cost of synchronization when one has a stream up. Mm -hmm. I think it was Carl from the reception to Jim and they would go in streams. Well, if you have, I can tell from personal experience because I live in the middle of the countryside and I don't have fast internet. So I actually know what you're talking about. I have those problems in my daily life. And yes, it happens. So if you're trying to watch a video in Theodore and you have a very slow internet connection, it might happen that the Let's say the presentation loads first and then you have it out of sync. That happens, yes. So from, from our, our point, what we do is um, having the presentation and the presenter um, and audio is connected to the present presenter. Um, if it is not 100% synchronized, it doesn't matter so much to us because the presentation is usually static anyways. Uh, to a certain point and you go out of sync for even one or two seconds, it could be a disaster. I mean, it will be the opposite of, <laughs> of pointing. Uh, may I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So sure, uh, sure. at first, both players, I would say, have a very good uh, implementation on how to keep uh, the track synchronized. So for sure, there might be edge cases like, like you call it and you're turning together two edge cases. You're turning together an edge case where you don't have bandwidth 
and you have a very complex video. And yes, um, uh, two complex videos with much interaction and a high bandwidth because of this. And um, from the experience of the most universities that you find here, I would say, especially when it comes to the presentation layer, so the slide recordings and so on, you will no they can tell you, uh, I guess one of Manchester from Manchester told me yesterday that within your videos, you, you even turn down the frame rate for the VGA recordings only, and uh, that the video is taking less um, ba um, bandwidth and so on than the audio. So uh, you can, takes is very compact, but if you, with medical or whatever staff that you probably have in mind, as I know you for a while, um, I doubt that there is a real good solution where you can say, I have a 4K video that I somehow managed to get to somebody on the countryside on a one megabit stream. Yes, then you have to tell your students, your customers or whatever, that um, they have to improve or they have to download the video. And especially with a Paella player and so on, uh, I would guess that there are uh, settings doable to mirror this to your own uh, machine and then play it and so on. And if that all is not sufficient, uh, I could recommend to you if you want to get engaged with Opencast, we are an open source community and creating um, apps or software for your PC that does a Downloading without providing access, uh, an easy access, let's say, to your customers and allowing this could also be an option. But uh, yes, for sure, there's always something where you can improve. And we will see in the next months AV1 as a video codec. And I'm guessing that we are very soon will see the first persons adopt to this uh, as the basic infrastructure with an open cast is there and you only have to encode it and hopefully Dash will do the rest of the magic. Um, so um, I guess, but we something for the World Cafe or the dinner maybe. Yeah, so we also use different quality levels. Users can choose those quality levels themselves. I've also observed that our presentation encoding is quite aggressive, so it is sometimes smaller than the audio files. And with that we are yeah, we, we don't have any complaints. I, at least I'm not aware of them. If you are aware of, or if you are, um, yeah, if you are afraid that those are issues for you, you can also um, make a picture-in-picture -picture version in OpenCast and use just one stream. So there are many ways you can go about it. And you can just get rid of the presenter stream. Our, according to our evaluation, most students don't care about it. So um, coming back to Moodle, um, a comment from my side. Uh, currently, I uh, develop a, a native integration of Paella Player in Moodle. Uh, just to get a second step, uh, having multi uh, streams in Moodle uh, with the plugins. But uh, in this case, there are major things to change in the plugin set. Uh, currently, it's uh, video file based and. Uh, for the future, it should be media package based so that you can get all flavors and all settings from OpenCast. But this is an, uh, a feature that um, might re uh, result in an ar architecture break and uh, breaks down all the backward compatibility uh, to the current version of the plugin. So that, uh, that should be discussed in the further Moodle list and, and in the meetings. Uh, in the next weeks. Um, yeah, so I had a discussion with Tobias about that. And from what I understand is that um, this change would not require much, um, yeah, much work, actually. So that what you would need to do is change the repository um, to embed another link to the media package, for example. And then the filter would change um, that out with another player, maybe a player that is embedded within the plugin itself, like you are developing. So uh, it's, it's my understanding that it's not that hard to do. Okay, so maybe I'm I'm so I'm I'm not a developer of this plugin, 
but um, that was my understanding. Maybe I missed a uh, part. Um, you mentioned the scheduling, that the instructors uh, scheduled event. Is that done in the plugin or, or is it? How you do this? The do scheduling is done by us admins, but the instructors can see the scheduled event okay. within the plugin. Okay. Thank you. I think Olaf still had a question. I saw him raise his hand at the beginning. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Anybody else? Okay, just for my curiosity, uh, I, to the audience, um, who's using Moodle at his university? So nearly half the people. <laughs> who's using Ilias? <laughs> you are. I might ask Stud IP, as I know that at least we <laughs> are <laughs> having this. Uh, Zakai is probably the next. Um, um, yes, and now. What's left? So Ola might be an option for some, but I'm not aware if somebody's here, but any, ah, ah Blackboard, sorry, I forgot about you. <laughs> <laughs> Such a strange commercial system. <laughs> um, well, uh, I, can, I can make a comment on that. So, so we, we completely avoided any form of LTI integration, specifically because of Blackboard. I would not recommend it as a platform to other people. Um, <laughs> One of the things we figured out early on, because we actually did start looking at LTI, was the version offered in our Blackboard instance of LTI was very out of date, so we decided that would probably be difficult. And then we also predicted that um, our LMS has much worse downtime than um, our, the video portal that we went on to create. So we didn't want to train our students to go to our somewhat unreliable LMS, because they'd believe the lecture capture would be unavailable when actually it was fine. It was the LMS that was down for days or hours. So that's why we avoided LTI integration uh, to this day. And you're thinking about moving to something more reliable? Uh, yeah, so th 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 there's a large scale review of what we should move to and it's been going on for a while and it, it hasn't published its findings yet. Um, so that, that's done by a different team from, from my group. So I'd expect it to come to some sort of conclusion soon, but I don't know what that will be, but maybe we might be looking at LTI again after that. And you are, um, what are you using? We use Mozilla. Ah, okay. And what kind of integration do you uh, use for that? What kind of an integration? So we have a, uh, uh, a, a uh, so-called plugin, or it's kind of a, it's called Switchcast, which is uh, Switchcast for hosted by Switch in Switzerland. and. We, we, it's basically just integration of OpenCast uh, series, uh, uh, complete series with uh, recordings in it. So once they publish, they, they appear in uh, OLAT, in the OLAT course. And um, otherwise it's just single videos. And you say you just probably, if somebody from Innsbruck wants to talk to you about <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, Rüdiger, yeah. can we just finish up and then we do the rest? Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have still asked if, I've, if, if we've missed an uh, LMS. But uh, anything that was not mentioned yet? Zakai I asked for, and we saw Zakai uh, uh, in the beginning. Ah. Now we, sorry for no, taking over, fine, <laughs> but fine. I saw that we had enough time for your discussion. But I <laughs> <laughs> just very briefly, we are... Uh, in the program of moving to uh, Brightspace. So is if anyone is using Brightspace, talk to us. <laughs> uh, probably not, so nobody spoke up. Um, so uh, sorry for taking over that. Um, <laughs> I have no idea what they are using. Maybe that's something for the telepresence <laughs> to ask Jody and Kevin and um, tell us what they are using. Um. Really just one point um, from me to finish it up. If you have, um, if you are interested in that plugin, you can go to the mailing list and uh, ask your questions there. Um, and also you can come um, to the web meetings and we can discuss things there further. Um, it was uh, 
the last meeting was last week. Um, so in a month we will have a new uh, meeting. So that's all from our part. Thank you.